In this video, we're going to be looking on pages Excel 28 and 29, which we're going to be inserting a function. And functions are predefined worksheet formulas that enable you to perform complex calculations easy. Uh, you can use the insert function button on the formula bar to choose a function from a dialog box. You can quickly insert the sum function using the auto sum button on the ribbon, or you can click the auto sum list arrow to enter other frequently used functions such as average. You can also use the quick analysis tool to calculate commonly used functions, and once again that is new for 2013. Functions are organized into categories such as financial, date and time, and statistical based on their purpose. You can insert a function on its own or as part of another formula. For example, if you have used the sum function on its own to add a range of cells, you could also use the sum function within a formula that adds a range of cells and then multiply the total by a decimal. If you use a function alone, it always begins with an equal sign as the formula prefix. So if we take a look on page Excel 8, step 1 tells us that we want to click on cell B15. And of course we can see that here with our label here, we're going to be finding the average of this information. And this is the cell where you want to enter the calculation that averages expenses per country for the first quarter. Now you want to use the insert function dialog box to enter this function. And to do that, we're going to click on this little FX button here, and this is the insert function button. And when we click on that, uh, of course we notice that an equal sign is inserted in the active cell and in the formula bar, and the insert function dialog box opens up. In this dialog box, you specify the function you want to use by clicking it in the select a function list, uh, which is down here. And this select a function list initially displays recently used functions. Now if you don't see the function you want to use, you can click the OR select a category list arrow, which is right up here, and you can choose the category that you'd like. Of course, you can always choose the ALL to see them all uh, that's on there as well. Now of course, if you're not sure which category to choose, uh, you can type the function name or description in the search for field uh, function field. Now the average function is a statistical function but you don't need to open the statistical category because this function already appears in the most recently used category. So even though you maybe have not already used it before, or nobody on your computer has used it before, it should be here uh, by default uh, on there. And like I said, if not, you can just type it in here and click on Go and it will search for you. Now, of course, when using the insert function button or the auto sum list arrow, it's not necessary to type the equal sign because notice it's already input in for us. Now step three tells us that we do want to click the average uh, on here in the select a function list arrow. Of course that's if necessary. We want to make sure it's highlighted in blue. And of course we want to read the information that appears under the list. And of course it tells us that it returns the average or arithmetic mean of its arguments, which can be numbers or names, arrays, or reference that contains numbers. Once we have that, we want to click on OK. And of course, once we click on OK, the Functions Arguments dialog box opens up in which you define the range of cells you want to average. Now, of course, we have the function here that's going to be the average, but we need some arguments in which that's going to give us the data that's going to give us our answer that's there. And of course, to learn about a function, you can click it in the Select a Function list, and the arguments and format uh, requir requir required for the function appear below the list. So that's another thing that's on there as well and you can take a look down here and this tells you some of the information about it. Step 4 uh, tells us that we want to click on the collapse button. Now of course this is up in number 1 and we see that right here, this button right here, this is what we call the collapse button. When we click on that, notice it collapses the function arguments dialog box. And we want to do that in the number one field of the function's argument dialog box. Then we're going to select the range B4 to B11. And of course you'll notice that the range is automatically typed in for us in this dialog box. Once we have that, we're going to click back on this button here. And instead of the collapse button, this is what we call the expand button. And of course notice it brings it back up to the full function's argument dialog box. 
Now, once again, when you click the collapse button, that minimizes the dialog box so you can select the cells. You can see more of the worksheet and you can select what you need to select. Now, when you click the expand button, the dialog box is going to be restored. Now, you can also begin dragging uh, in the worksheet to automatically minimize the dialog box. After you select the desired range, the dialog box is going to be restored. And of course, this is actually going to go ahead and give us some results here as well, and it tells us here that here's the result. And of course, remember, when we're selecting a range, you have to remember to select all the cells between and including the two references in the range. So if it wants B4 to B11, you need to choose B4, B5, B6, and all of these down here to B11. In step 5, it tells us to click on OK. And the function arguments dialog box then closes, and the calculated value is now displayed in cell B15. The average expenses for the country for quarter 1 uh, is 4300 53.0788. Next, on step 6, it tells us that we want to click on cell C15. Now, on this time, we're going to do this same function uh, on there. We're going to average this out, but we're going to do it just a little bit differently. So, once we're in cell C15, we're going to go back to our home tab and we're going to click on the auto sum list arrow. Now here's the auto sum button, but the list arrow is the little arrow pointing down next to it. And of course we notice we have some of the most commonly used functions that's out there. Sum, average, count numbers, max, and min. And in this case we want to click the average. And once we have that, of course we'll notice that the screen tip appears uh, beneath cell C15 and it displays the arguments. So you need to have number one, and then of course if you're going to average out another group of numbers, you can do that as well uh, that's on there, but we want to just average out a range of numbers. And of course the text, number one, is shown in boldface type, telling you that the next step is to supply the first cell in the group that you want to average. Now you want to average a range of cells, so you can average individual cells, or you can average a range of cells, so we want to average a range of cells. So if we look on step 7, it tells us that we want to select this range C4, so we click on C4, and we want to go down to C11. So we want the cell range C4 to C11, and then we click on the enter button on the formula bar. And of course once we do that, we now notice that the average expenses per country for the second quarter has now appeared in cell C15. That just shows you two different ways to find the average. Uh, there's another way that you can possibly do this, and that's just go ahead and start typing this in, uh, which we'll work on that in a different uh, lesson that's on there uh, for now. But to do this, what we're going to do is now we're going to go ahead and fill the rest of the information uh, in for cells D15 and E15. So we're going to use the fill handle, and we're just going to fill in the rest of the information. So really and truly, once you get familiar with how to use Excel, all you have to mostly do is, is complete up one row of information and then you can copy it over. Uh, now you do have to verify that the information is correct and kind of look and make sure that it's a reality check that it's okay and it's good uh, and that the formula is what you want it to be, but once it's there and once you're for sure that, yeah, that's the average of D4 to D11, that's what we need, and that's the average of E4 to E11, that's what we need, then that's what all you have to do. And it makes uh, calculating up these numbers so quick. Instead of, okay, let me add this, 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 this. Okay, how many did I have? Okay, let's add all these up. And uh, it makes it a whole lot simpler to do that. Of course, once we have that, go ahead and make sure that you do save your work uh, on there because uh, we've now uh, finished inserting in functions. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at typing functions. So as I said you know, before, there's another way of doing this, and we're going to be typing functions, but we'll do that in the next video. Uh, so make sure that you do save your work and you're ready to move on.